you might be noticing that I'm not logged in. So that's an advantage of this method. And let's see what kind of requests the site makes once we load more jobs to the page. As you can see, you got the list of jobs as raw data. Hello everyone. Welcome back to the data circle, your go-to place for useful data projects. Today, we're gonna to be scraping some jobs off of LinkedIn. So sit back, relax, and let's get scraping. So first, we're gonna start importing our libraries, our dependencies. We're gonna be using requests for this one. Uh, no more Selenium. From BS4, let's import beautiful soup to parse the HTML. Let's import random. Uh, actually, we're not gonna be using random for this one, I believe, but let's leave it there just in case. Uh, import pandas and let's get started. So first you want to define the kinds of jobs you're looking for. So let's look for instance for Python developer jobs uh, in Toronto. Now let's get over to LinkedIn and over there we're going to be figuring out where everything is, where the stuff we're going to scrape is. You might, you might be noticing that I'm not logged in. So that's an advantage uh, of this method. You don't really need to log in. You don't need to worry about your account getting banned. So let's search for the jobs we want. So Python developer, uh, Toronto, Ontario. As you can see, we got two sections here, one with the list of jobs. And on the right side, you got the jobs that's currently selected. Let's open our inspector and let's see what's going on. Let's get the network tab going. Let's filter by fetch uh, requests. And let's see what kind of requests the site makes once we load more jobs to the page, once we scroll down to the bottom. Uh, we can see here we got a bunch of requests. Uh, this one in particular is the one we need. As you can see, it got the list of jobs as raw data. So let's copy the URL and let's head back to our code. So this is the URL we need. Uh, let's check out everything that's here. Uh, we don't need a bunch of this stuff, so let me just go ahead and delete it. So this is the start position, 25. So it starts at job 25, and then you can change that uh, as you go uh, to get more jobs. Uh, and then you got the keywords and the location, as you can see here. Uh, let's add that to a variable called list URL. Uh, let's then start requesting, um, fetch data, fetching data from that URL. So request.get uh, list URL, and let's save that to a variable called response. Now let's see what our response looks like. So we got a response code 200, that's perfect. It means it was a success. And response text, we got the HTML we needed. So you can see each job is listed there as we saw on the page earlier. Uh, you can see here we got a bunch of uh, list items. Uh, each one of these is a separate job listing. All right, now, second thing we wanna look for uh, is for the specifics of each uh, job. So on the right side there, whenever we click, we select a job, it's gonna make a request. So let's see which one is the one that returns the data for a specific job we requested. Not this one, not that one. Let's keep looking, probably this one. Yeah, that's the one. So Python developer job to run Ontario. So let's get that URL into a variable as well. As you can see here, we have a job ID, which is going to be useful later. And we can remove all of the other stuff. Uh, from my experience, you don't really need that. We just need the job ID for this particular application. Now let's save that to job URL. Now instead of the ID that's already here, we actually want to add a variable called job ID because that's how we're gonna be rotating through jobs. Again, uh, we're gonna be getting a response from a request to the job URL uh, website. So request.get job underscore URL. And then also the job ID, we're gonna be getting uh, this one for example now. So let's put it here, uh, let's see if it works. Let's see what kind of response we get. Yep, response 200, all good. Now let's get the text and see if we're getting the correct HTML. Yep, everything seems to be here. All right, now let's see the structure. Let's see how this 
jobs are laid out in the list page. So as you can see here, all of the data is inside the list item. So now we want to get the data from each one of the pages for the lists. So list data equals uh, response.text. And then we want to parse it. So list soup equals beautiful soup uh, list data HTML parser. Once we have that, uh, we can get all of the jobs. So for that, we're going to be starting to page jobs variable uh, and then list soup. So we're going to find all of the list items. And now we should have, let's see. Okay, so it's actually dot parser. Now let's iterate through the jobs in the page jobs. Uh, for that, let's see where we can find that job ID that we need for the job URL. So that job ID is in a div called base card div. So let's store that div into a variable. Um, okay, so job.find, uh, let's look for that specific div. Right, uh, then from that we want to extract our job ID. Let's just first see if we got everything we needed. Yep, so we can see the ID there. It's inside the data entity earn. So from inside the base card div, let's get the data that's inside the data ent entity earn. So it's gonna be pretty similar, a pretty similar process. But let's split it, because you can see we use columns for splitting it. So you can see it's uh, earned, uh, column, li, column, job posting, column, job id. So we actually want the fourth uh, piece of data, so that's why we use the three there. And let's print it and see if we got the number we needed. Perfect, so you can see here we got all of the numbers from that specific page. So all of the job ids. Now we have the data we need to iterate, iterate through job listings inside that list. And then we also want to append that to a list called ID list. So each job ID is going to be stored inside the ID list. Perfect. Uh, let's check it out. Yep, perfect. So all of the job IDs are inside ID list. Now we can proceed with accessing each job individually and gathering all the data we need from them. Now, so let's iterate. So for job ID in ID list, we're going to be accessing each individual job. But first, we got to use beautiful soup to parse the HTML that we're getting from the job URL. Now we're going to go to the job page to the specific job page and see what info we need from there. So let's start by the company name. So let's see where is the company listed. We can see here uh, we got a specific uh, class. Let's copy and paste it and use that one to get the company name. So that's this top card, uh, org name link top card. Let's store that in a variable called company name. And let's use beautiful soup to find that specific uh, div. Just like we did before, nothing new here. And let's extract uh, text and let's strip any spaces that might come before it. Now we're going to be using a dictionary for this. So the job post dictionary uh, and it's going to be inside company name. We got to create the dictionary first. So let's create an empty dictionary called job post. And let's print uh, the responses status code that we're getting just to be sure that this error is not related to that. No, it's not. Uh, all right, I, I forgot to get the text, but also it's not a div, it's an A tag. 
All right, now we're getting 200s all across the board. That's what we were hoping for. And we can see here, we got the company name at least for one of the postings, one of the listings. Because now we also got to add each of these dictionaries to a list. So we're going to be creating a list of dictionaries called job list. Let's append the job post to the job list. 200 all across, perfect. Let's look at the list. Awesome, so for that specific page we're looking at, we got all of the jobs. Okay, now we're gonna get the time since posted. So you can see it's inside this span, uh, class. Let's copy and paste it, just like we did before. Okay, uh, since we're at it, let's also get the number of applicants as well. So just like we did before, so it's inside this num applicants caption top card. Let's just copy and paste this twice. Uh, add a couple more entries to our dictionary. Uh, so time posted and num applicants. Perfect. Let's add our classes in here. And it's no longer an A tag, it's now a span. All right, let's check it out, see if it works. Oh no, I got an error. Oh yeah, my bad. So uh, the class stays the same. It's actually, we just gotta change the A tag to span. Perfect, now it should work. Okay, we got an error, so uh, non-type. Okay, I got it. Uh, some of these might be empty, so we gotta add some try accept blocks here to handle those kinds of exceptions. Let's add one for each entry, for each piece of data. And in, in case that piece of data is not there, in case it's empty, uh, we're just gonna add an empty string to the dictionary. So except uh, job post company name is gonna be equal none. Perfect. Now let's do the same for the other two. So accept, now job post and I'm applicants equals to none in case there is nothing to see there. Let's run it. Perfect. So you can see we've successfully handled all of our exceptions. Let's run the job list. Perfect. So we got all of the data. It's all populated. So the company names, the date since listed and everything else. Uh, also, uh, I forgot one more quite vital piece of information. We also need the job title. So that's what I'm gonna be doing next. It's the same as before. We just gotta figure out the kind of tag it's inside of and add it here. So let's see, we can get it from the top there. So we can see the title Python developer or let's see if there's Anywhere else you can get it from, uh, maybe here too. Let's see which one's easier. Uh, no, we're probably not gonna go with this one because it's just a strong tag, there's a bunch of them there. But this one's inside an A2 tag, which is much better since there's only one in the page. So let's get the class for that specific H2 tag. Let's copy and paste it into our code. Awesome. Let's do it then. It's an H2. And we're also going to uh, gather the text and strip any spaces that come before it. Add an exception. Equals none. And that should be all for now. Let's run it. And let's see what our job list looks like. Perfect, so we can see we got titles here. So full stack web developer, uh, senior Python developer, uh, all of them are there. Let's add it to a pandas data frame now. So we get a better way of visualizing and manipulating our data. Uh, so jobs df, that's gonna be the name of the data frame. And let's get it from the job list we just created. There you go. We just got a few entries here. Uh, if you guys wanna add more, 
As I said before, you can go to the list URL. Let me show you guys how. So go to the list URL and change that to uh, a different number, a higher number. And then you're going to be starting from a different page and get more jobs than the one that you have there. So let's add a couple more. And you guys can uh, add that to a for loop if you want and keep iterating uh, through different pages until there are no more jobs. And then you can create a pretty sizable uh, data frame from it. So here I'm just doubling the number of jobs we're gathering since I already added the page starting from 25. Now we're going to start from 50. As you can see here, we got, we got a bunch more and our DF looks a lot longer. Now from this DF, I want to create a CSV as well. So let's do a jobs DF dot to CSV. Uh, just so you guys can see what it would look like in an Excel file. So let's create the CSV called Toronto Python Developer. Uh, and also we don't want the index from the data frame as usual. So index equals false. Now we should have our CSV. Yep, perfect right here. Let's open it up. And there you go. So all of the data is there. I'm just going to make it look a bit nicer. Uh, and let's add that to a table. And that's pretty much it. Now, if you guys enjoyed this video, please consider subscribing to the Data Circle and I'll see you guys on the next one.